hands tonight, God, and we just thank you, God, that we can come and praise you tonight, God, the God of healing, the God of peace, the God who breaks chains, the God who delivers. Tonight, we just welcome you here tonight, Jesus, and we've come to magnify and to praise your name tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Show! 
Jesus, always open our eyes to see you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. How many are glad to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come to enter the gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I've come with my feet on the battleground because my weapon is going to be my sound tonight. So let's praise him tonight. Hallelujah.
with thanksgiving tonight, Lord. Enter your courts with praise. We lift you up. Our God, our Savior, our King, our mighty Lord, we thank you. We love you. We praise you, Lord God, in your house tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome out to the house tonight, God's house. Amen. Amen. We're here, but God is also here tonight. Amen thankful for God for that. That's who God is. God is here to meet us. You came and he came. Amen. He's here tonight. Where any two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst. I see a few more than two or three. So what does that mean? God is here tonight and we're excited about that, excited about God's house. I'd like to welcome all those visiting tonight to this wonderful night in, in our church and uh, not only is it a great service we're going to have, but it is our pastor's 60th birthday. Oh! Her 06th birthday, as she said this morning, her 06th birthday. So we want to welcome, uh, wish her a happy birthday again. We'll be uh, talking about that a little bit later. Um, uh, as our offering helpers come, I just want to remind everybody about this announcement that this Saturday, November 16th, is our fall cleanup from 9 to 12. And uh, we could still use some more hands. And then our rain date is November 23rd. But today you can still sign up for this event. Amen. How many knows uh, when you rake your yard, it's a whole lot easier when you got someone else with you to get things done. Well, church has got a lot of leaves. So we're going to all gather together and help out on this day. You can sign yourself and your family up to be a part of raking and cleaning up our church grounds. Amen. Be a part and a blessing. Sign-up sheets are in the table, in the foyer, and in Bissell Hall. Don't forget your gloves, your rakes, your mittens, your scarves. No, it's going to be, we heard, it's going to be beautiful out that day. Amen. It was prophesied in the house this morning. <laughs> Amen. Maurice Hanciola, the prophet. Amen. <laughs> prophet Elijah. Amen. Oh, sister. <laughs> Praise God. No, it's just going to be, it's going to be a great day. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we have a good time. We work, but, you know, it's a, it's a great, great time just getting together with your brother and sister and, and, uh, you know, raking and just smiling, having a good time. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. What greater, what greater opportunity do we have today than to give to God, give back to the Lord, be a blessing to him and his kingdom, and we can all do it, be a part together. Uh, as we sa I said earlier, there's a lot of people here tonight. So all, all together, giving and blessing the kingdom of God through our offering, and you in return will be blessed for it. So we just thank you for that. Let us pray uh, over this offering together. Father, we just thank you and love you. This is our opportunity to give a little back to you, God. God, this morning, we, we were poor, you, were, you poured yourself out upon us, and tonight we want to pour ourselves back to you through this offering. So bless it, multiply it, and reach every need through the givers tonight. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would wear? I was lost, but he brought me Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my life.
Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You can all be seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Are you all comfy tonight? Because <laughs> I am so not in my comfort zone. <laughs> and Reverend Mancini said after service this morning, he says, it's just like convalescent home, but you guys don't look like convalescent home. <laughs> But we're going to get through this. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much. Your presence is already here, God. And yes, Jesus, I'm not in my comfort zone, God, but you left your comfort zone, Jesus, to come on this earth, God, for lost humanity, Jesus. You left your comfort, Jesus, for Calvary, God. God, so I just give this to you, God. Jesus, just use me tonight, God, and help me to share what you laid upon my heart, God, for your people, Jesus. God, set people free tonight, God. Save souls tonight, Jesus. Lord, let people step up to that higher place, God, that you're calling them to, God. And we just thank you for it, God. And I know your word won't return void, God. But it's going to accomplish, God. It's going to accomplish what you set it forth to do, God. We just praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sh I'm going to start by where this all started. And um, this was back in August 3rd of this year, um, I came across this video, and over the last year and a half, I've really been praying and seeking God, and um, I just am so thankful for this church tonight. I just have to take a minute and just share how grateful, grateful my heart is for my pastor, for ministry board, and for all of you. You know, you always think you appreciate your church, but it's not till you go through something that you really learn to appreciate your church. And you really see how much you need the body of Christ. And all your smiles, your cards, your hugs, they meant so much to me. They kept me going. Times I'd break down in the back and cry, someone was always there to encourage me, to hug me. 
my pastor. I can't even begin to tell you. She was there for me every step of the way. And you know, pastor just doesn't do things to do things. She does them with excellency. She dots every I, crosses every T, and I don't think I would have made it without my church. I honestly can say that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being there for me. And it's really helped the healing process in my heart. So I just thank you for that. Thank you, Pastor. I love you so much. You're not only my pastor, you're my friend. I'm just really grateful tonight. So back during all this, I just decided to draw really closer to God. And um, I really started praying and seeking God. And on August 3rd, I came across this video. And um, God really talked to me about it. And, and it was a place that I was in at one time. And uh, we're going to show it to you in a few minutes. And at the end of the video, my heart just leaped. And God said, there are people that are in that condition. And God has really been talking to the church today. And I'm not going to say hardly anything different than I thought Brother Dean was going to preach my message. Pastors touched on it. Reverend Kalinsky touched on it in a different way. And God's really speaking to the church. And he's calling the church to step up to a higher place, a higher calling in him. He's called you. He's predestinated you. He has a destiny for you to fulfill. It's like deep calleth unto deep. I just felt God just calling me deeper into a deeper walk with him. And that's what God's doing today. He put a substance in you. He put a substance in you, youth. You don't have to be an adult for God to call these things to come to the surface. They're already coming to the surface. God has put gifts and calling in your lives. And he's, that's what he's been speaking to the church. So I'm going to read you a few scriptures, and you don't have to go there for time's sake. I know we're having a shorter meeting. But in Jeremiah 1, 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou cameth forth out of the wound, I sanctified thee. He set you apart, church. He took you and he set you apart and ordained the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee, a prophet under the nations. Ephesians 1, 5 says, Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And predestinate means to foreordain to an earthly destiny by divine decree. And I looked up decree, and I was surprised what it meant. It means an official order issued by a legal authority. God has declared an official order. And there's no way to change it, it said. There's no way to change the outcome. So what God has decreed in your life, what he has predestined in your life, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. I don't care how old you are. If you're serving God, God has decreed it, and there's no way to change its outcome. It is willed by God. God has willed you to be an overcomer today. It's a done deal. It is willed by God. Destiny is a preordained path for your life. So before Pastor Kalinsky was even in her mother's womb, God sanctified her. He called her and set her apart. And he had a plan for her life. And he said to her, you're going to be a youth pastor. And one day you're going to be a pastor of the full gospel church. And there was one time, if I'm correct, that pastor didn't want that job. But God decreed it. He spoke it. And it had to come to pass. He spoke it. It was a done deal. And Pastor Kalinsky 
is the pastor of the Full Gospel Church, and I'm glad. Are you glad about that tonight? Praise God. And whatever God has decreed in your life, it's going to come to pass. So I want to show you this little video, and um, are you guys ready? We didn't think we had it tonight, but... And my heart just leaped at the end of this video. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no sound. We, we couldn't get the sound tonight. But this bird was weak and unable to fly. It was an eagle stuck in a well. And I'd been there for a long time. And what happened is, is his feathers got so wet that it couldn't get out of the well. So that when this guy found him, he was, um, he was almost dead. And he was in really bad shape. He had been in that well for a long time. And if they hadn't found him, he would have surely died. But they came by and they took him out. They checked his wings, they weren't broken. So he got stuck in there and he basically was starving to death because he couldn't get out. But he wasn't quite ready to fly home yet, so they took him somewhere. There he goes. There he takes flight. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. And when he took flight, my heart leaped. Something leaped inside me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something just rose up and leaped inside me. And I think I, I emailed Pastor and sent it to her. And this was way back in August. And I emailed her a lot back then. I, I just, <laughs> I'm surprised her phone didn't blow up. But um, I had to. I just, I didn't know what God was doing in my life. And I just felt God in such a deep way, and I, I just kept emailing her and, and texting her and whatever. But um, God spoke to me about this eagle, and um, he said that there's a lot of people that are like that eagle, and they're in a well. And, you know, sometimes life comes and knocks us down, And we get in this place, and we can't get out. But God doesn't want you to stay there. He doesn't want you to stay in a well. He doesn't want whatever may have put you there. It may have been hurts. may have been failures. It may have been words. God really impressed that on me that there's some people here that a lot of words have been said to you, and... Um, they really hurt. We have to really watch our words. They really cut deep. And um, I know when I was a young teen, and I never told anybody this, but someone said some words to me, and it cut me to my core. And I never shared it with anybody. And every time I would get up to do something, those words would play in my head. And... Um, it wasn't until after I got saved for a long time that God set me free from those words and healed me. Hallelujah. So God is for you. I don't care what is holding you down in that well. God has predestinated you to fly. He wants you to fly like that eagle. He wants you to get up out of that place. He's calling you forth. Young people, he's calling you forth. Maybe you see your friends are doing things for God, and you're like, I want to do things for God. I want to do that. 
Well, whatever's holding you back tonight, God has a plan for you. It may not be like your friend's plan, because it's special. God designed it just for you, that only you can do. That he wants you to fly tonight like that eagle. He doesn't want you to stay in that place. So I don't know what it is tonight. I don't know what put you in that well. I don't know if it's discouragement, depression, maybe your heart was broken. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. But you don't have to stay there tonight because God wants you to fly. Hallelujah. God wants you to be like that eagle, and he wants you to soar. He's calling forth those things in your life to show forth his glory. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, hallelujah, once Jesus sets you free, hallelujah. you free and you soar and take flight, you're never going to go back. You are never going to go back to that well. Oh, Jesus, I don't know what's holding you back tonight. I don't know, but come to Jesus tonight. Let him fill you tonight. Let him set you free so you can fly and soar like that eagle. That's what he purposed for you. He has a gift and calling in your life. He wants to use it. He wants you to glorify him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I don't know, it could be fear holding you back. I know fear held me back for a long time, a long time. And when I got, when God started speaking about bringing this message, I said, God, you know I can't call pastor and tell her I, want, I have a message. I said, if you want me to bring this message, you're going to have to have pastor call me. I, didn't, I never shared this with Pastor. So the next day, I look at my phone, and there's an email from Stephanie Francois. I am not kidding. And it said, preach. And I opened the email, and I, it said, Pastor Kalinsky has scheduled you to preach on November 10th. <laughs> so, so I emailed Stephanie back, and I said, are you sure you want Judy L. and not another Judy? And she sent back a big smile. She said, no, you're the right Judy. And I couldn't say no. I said, God, whatever, whatever you want me to do, Jesus, whatever you have for me to do, I'll do. But uh, I'm going to read you another scripture. Let me find it for you. So you don't have to stay in that place you're in. God is calling you to a higher place of praise. He given power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you could stand tonight, our ushers can come. Music ministry. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling you tonight to a higher place of praise. He's calling you forth tonight. And if you don't know this Jesus, if you don't know him, you can come down, and he will fill your heart with him. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God, praise the Lord. Let's all bow, bow our heads in this house, lift our hands, hallelujah, hallelujah. As Sister Judy was ministering, maybe God, maybe sometimes you see God, I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I should be, or I'm in a bad place. Just like that eagle, God, through his word, through his messenger tonight, God has come to pick you up out of that place, lift you up, help you, cause you to fly again. Amen? So tonight, if you're here and that the word of God spoke and it spoke to you in such a simple way, I want you to come to this altar. Come to this altar. We got ushers here that will help pray with you. If you need Jesus, maybe there's something that's just bringing you low, just kind of like that well that eagle was in, kind of bringing you low. 
Come tonight to the altar and let God pick you up again. Let him mount you up with wings as eagles once again. Don't stay there. God can help you out of it. God can lift you up and strengthen you. God will renew you. Hallelujah, just like the scripture she just read. And so if that's you, come. Hallelujah. And as people are coming, let's just lift our hands tonight and thank our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here and you just, you have a need. You need, maybe you're not in a well, but you just have a need. You need someone to agree with you in prayer. Come to the altar. If you're sick, come to the altar. Let, let, come agree. Let God lift you up tonight like that wings of an eagle. Hallelujah. Flying above the storm, above the problem. Let God help you. So come to this altar tonight. Hallelujah. If that's you, come. And then the saints of God, we're going to gather around those at this altar. We're going to worship our Savior. Lift him up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God can do whatever you have need of. She said that she read the scripture. God predest, God predestinated this night to help you, to lift you up, strengthen the people of God. So if that's you, come tonight. Be strengthened by God in Jesus' name. The sun set free.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's just thank, let's lift our hands tonight. Thank God. Still have people getting prayer. Want to give time for. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. Praise God. Some people still get in prayer. I want to give a moment for them. Hallelujah. To receive from God tonight. We just Let's just be thankful to God. I mean, we got so many good things. I thank God that God doesn't leave us alone. I thank God that sometimes we feel like we get down in those, those well places and, and it's not good, but God is there to help us and to lift us up and to set us up on high. When we have a need, Jesus Christ is there to lift us up. So let's just sing this one more time tonight as they pray at this altar. Just pray for those who are getting prayer tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I am. I'm a child of God. Amen. Are you free tonight? Amen. I'm a child of God. I'm free tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's so good to be free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Judy. Thank you, God, for your word tonight. Just blessed by the things of God. Just grateful tonight. Well, everybody, we have a birthday celebration tonight. For our pastor, Pastor Eleanor Kalinske. Bishop Bestile, Pastor Kalinske is in the house. Amen. So tonight, before we are new here, hold on. Hold on, everybody. For those of you who are new here, tonight is our pastor's birthday, and we're going to all be celebrating it to hold on we're all going to be celebrating it together at the olive tree uh, next door with some cake and some refreshments and some good stuff but before we do we want to sing happy birthday to our pastor so if she can come 
up here tonight. We are all going to join in and sing happy birthday to Pastor Kalinske. Happy sixth birthday, Pastor Kalinske! A happy birthday to you. Like I said earlier, we're all going to be able to partake in that. We're going to go over to the olive tree. But if before we go over there, everyone is invited. But if we can help our cleaners so they're not here last, if we can get as many hands possible, and then if we can help them by pushing all the chairs up and checking your rows to make sure there's no garbage on the ground, water bottles, take your water bottle. We want to get this done quick so everybody can go over there and fellowship and uh, for pastor's birthday together. And remember parents, parents, when you are next door with your children, you are responsible for your children. Don't let your little children run off by themselves. Thank you, God bless you, you will see you all next door. Happy birthday! 